the vast majority of people spend their entire lives confined within the limits of their own thoughts, rarely transcending the narrow conceptions already formed about the self, conditioned by the inner past. In every human being, there is a layer of consciousness considerably deeper than thought itself. We can call this presence, perception, and a consciousness devoid of conditioning. Recognizing this dimension frees you from the affliction you inflict on yourself and others when you limit yourself to your conditioned little self and let it lead your existence. Love, happiness, creativity, and true serenity can only enter your life when you access the dimension of consciousness unbound from any conditional influence. If you can occasionally see that the thoughts that cross your mind are merely mental constructions, if you can recognize the patterns that repeat themselves in your mental and emotional reactions, it's a sign that this layer of consciousness is emerging. It constitutes the inner space where the narrative of your life unfolds. Thought has considerable power, easily capable of dragging you down. Each thought insists on its own importance, monopolizing your complete attention. Here's a spiritual exercise for you to practice. Don't take your thoughts so seriously. People often become entangled in the webs of their own thoughts very easily. The human mind craves to know, understand and control, often mistaking personal opinions and perspectives for absolute truth. The mind claims that things are exactly as it perceives them. You must transcend your thoughts to realize that when you interpret your own life, the lives of others, or judge any situation, you are simply expressing one point of view among countless possible ones. Your opinions and visions are mere fragments of thought, while reality transcends this limitation. Reality is an interconnected whole where nothing exists in isolation. Thought fragments reality into small parts, into limited concepts. The thinking mind is a powerful and useful tool, but it becomes restrictive when it completely dominates your existence, preventing you from realizing that the mind is only a reduced aspect of your consciousness. True wisdom doesn't originate from thinking, but from the simple act of giving full attention to something or someone. Attention is the essence of intelligence, consciousness itself. It dissolves the barriers created by thought, leading it to recognize that nothing exists in isolation. The only true intelligence is that which perceives the observed object in the unified field of perception. It is attention that overcomes division. Whenever you sink into incessant thoughts, you are blocking this process. You are not present where you are here and now. Religious, political, scientific doctrines and any belief that makes thought seem capable of encapsulating reality or truth are prisons. They are collective concepts. The curious thing is that people tend to like their own prisons because they provide a sense of security and an illusion of knowledge. Few things have caused humanity as much suffering as inflexible doctrines. It is true that sooner or later all doctrines are debunked because reality reveals their falsity. However, unless the fundamental illusion of absolute truths is understood, a new doctrine soon emerges to replace the previous one. What is this fundamental illusion? It is identification with thought. Spiritual awakening is awakening from the torpor of thought. The domain of consciousness goes far beyond what thought can encompass. When you stop blindly believing your own thoughts, you transcend thought and clearly realize that you are not essentially who you think you are. The mind is always unsatisfied, incessantly yearning for more. When you fully identify with your mind, you often feel bored. Boredom reveals that your mind craves additional stimulation, something more to contemplate. However, feeding this craving doesn't really satisfy your bored mind. Sometimes you try to satisfy this mental void by reading, making phone calls, watching TV, surfing the internet or shopping, and it's common to transfer this feeling of lack and desire for more to the body, seeking temporary satisfaction through food. The alternative is to accept boredom and restlessness by observing what it's like to experience boredom and anxiety. As you become aware of these sensations, a space and tranquility arises around you. Initially, this space is small internally, but as it grows, boredom loses its intensity and meaning. In this way, even boredom can teach you who you are and who you are not. You discover that you are not a bored person. Boredom is nothing more than a flow of conditioned energy within you. In the same way, you are not an angry, resentful, sad or frightened person. Boredom, anger, sadness and fear are not intrinsic to you. They are mental states and therefore transitory. What comes and goes is not who you are. I'm bored, who's aware of that? I'm angry, sad, afraid, who's aware of that? You are the one who is aware of it. 
you are not your feelings. Any form of judgment reveals that you are identified with the thinking mind. You are not seeing the other human being, but your concept of that individual. If you want to get rid of the anxiety and existential crisis that follow us from day to day, I've left a link in the first comment to help you get rid of them. Take a look. Reducing someone to a label is already a form of violence. Thought that is not rooted in conscience only serves the interests of the thinker and loses its purpose. Intelligence devoid of wisdom becomes dangerous and destructive. The majority of humanity is in this state. The dominance of thought in science and technology, although inherently neutral, has become detrimental because thought is often not rooted in consciousness. The next step in human evolution is to transcend thought. Today, this is our most urgent task. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't think anymore, but only that we shouldn't identify with thought or allow it to control us. There is a vital energy that permeates your entire being, every cell in your body, regardless of your thoughts. In this state of consciousness, when the mind is needed for practical tasks, it is present, and the mind works excellently when it is directed by the higher intelligence that is you. What you may not have realized yet is that this is the most important thing that can happen to you. It's the beginning of the transition from thinking to full presence, alertness and attention. Get comfortable with not knowing, because it will take you beyond the mind, which is always eager to find answers and interpret. The mind seeks conclusions, but not knowing is the path that will take you beyond the mind. A deeper knowledge, devoid of any concept, will emerge from this state. When mastery manifests itself fully in art, sports, dance, teaching, counseling, it means that the thinking mind is no longer in control, or at the very least, is in the background. In these moments, a force and intelligence greater than yourself is present, and at the same time is part of you. There are no more deliberate decisions. The right actions happen spontaneously, and you are not their agent. True mastery of life is the opposite of control. You align yourself with the greater consciousness, which acts, speaks, and accomplishes what is necessary. Facing a dangerous situation can temporarily interrupt the flow of thought and thus provide an insight into what it is like to be present, alert, and attentive. Truth transcends far beyond the mind's capacity to comprehend. No thought can encompass the whole truth. At most, it can point towards it, for example, by saying, all things are intrinsically one. This is an indication, not an explanation. To understand these words is to feel deeply inside the truth to which they point. This shows that we don't always identify at first some bad behavior or problems that we create in our lives without even realizing it. Nikola Tesla shows us how to get rid of bad habits. Click on the screen and watch it now.